So you're ready to build a dashboard, but where do you start? In this video, we'll introduce some data visualization principles and best practices and demonstrate exactly how to apply them to the dashboard design process. Now, data viz is equal parts art and science. And before you start just dumping data onto a canvas or choosing whatever chart looks pretty or happens to fill the page, you need to step back and ask yourself these three key questions. Number one, what type of data am I working with? Is it geospatial? Is it time series? Are there hierarchies? Is it financial? And so on. Number two, what exactly am I trying to communicate? Right? Is it a comparison across categories? Am I trying to show a composition, a relationship, a distribution? And third, who is my audience, right? Who's the end user and what exactly do they need? Am I presenting to or designing for a fellow analyst, for a manager, for an executive, or even for the general public? That end user will really dictate how my visuals are designed and developed. So let's go ahead and unpack each of these questions in a bit more depth, starting with question one. What type of data are you working with? Now, data comes in all shapes and sizes. It can fall in all sorts of categories. And some of the things you're looking for are things like, do I have time series data, right? Is there a date field that lets me show trends or patterns over time? Do I have geospatial fields that let me draw comparisons between geographic regions or locations using things like maps? Are there interesting categorical fields that I can use for filtering or segmenting the data in my reports? Again, do I have hierarchies that I can drill up or down into as part of my analysis? And then there's some less common categories as well. You might have financial specific data, you might have text data that's a little bit less visual or numeric. You may have funnel stages represented in your data set or even things like survey responses. And again, there are many, many more examples of the types of data that you might encounter. But the bottom line here is that the type of data that you're working with will often determine which type of visual will best represent it. For example, using maps to represent geospatial data, using line charts for time series data, bar or column charts for categorical comparisons, tree maps for hierarchical data, and so on and so forth. Question two is all about what you're trying to communicate. So let's break this down into four different categories here. It could be a comparison, a composition, a distribution, or a relationship. Now, a comparison is when you're trying to compare values either over time or across different categories. And the common visuals that you'll use to communicate comparisons are things like basic column and bar charts, clustered columns, data tables or heat maps, if you're using time series data, line charts or area charts, and then sometimes more specialized visuals like radar charts can be helpful here as well. Composition is all about breaking down the component parts of a whole. This is where you'll typically use visuals like stacked bar or column charts, pies or donut charts, stacked areas to show both composition and trending over time, or possibly some more specialized visuals like waterfalls, funnels, tree maps, or sunbursts. Distribution is about showing the frequency of values within a series, and histograms are really far and away the most common and popular type of visual to show distributions. If you've ever seen a bell curve or normal distribution, that's a histogram at work. You might use things like density plots or box and whisker charts here as well. And last but not least, we have relationships, which are about showing correlation between multiple variables. Scatter plots and bubble charts are far and away the most common visuals in this category. You could also potentially use data tables, heat maps, or a correlation matrix as well. So this can be a handy guide to help point you towards the right visuals to choose based on what you're trying to communicate. And I know this is a quick review. I know this can feel a little bit overwhelming talking about all of these different chart types. How could you possibly know which one to choose for any given situation? So the big takeaway here, the bottom line, is to keep it simple. There are hundreds of charts, if not thousands of charts to choose from. But at the end of the day, your basic tried and true options like bar charts, column charts, line charts, histograms, scatter plots, those are going to be a great fit in 90% of use cases. And the reason they're tried and true is because they often do the best job telling the simplest and clearest story, which ultimately is the goal of data visualization. And that brings us to question three. Who is the end user and what do they need? 
So let's simplify things a bit and imagine that there are three potential audiences. You've got the analyst, the manager, and the executive. Obviously, there are different variations of end users and audiences that exist out there, but this will help us start to understand how to tailor an analysis or visualization based on who's consuming it. So when you're designing for someone at the analyst level, typically these are people who like to see details. They want to understand what's happening at a granular level. They're analytically minded, so they might want to see things like tables or combo charts, a bit more complex, maybe a little bit more data heavy. And again, they'll want access to some granular detail to support root cause analysis. On the other hand, a manager level audience might want more summarized data with a focus on clear and actionable insights to help them operate the business. So in that case, it typically makes sense to skew towards more common or basic charts and graphs, some detail, but really only when it supports a specific insight or recommendation. And then finally, at the top of the food chain, you've got the executive audience. These are people who are super busy. Typically, they just want high level, crystal clear KPIs that they can use to track business health and top line performance at a glance. So this is where visuals like KPI cards or very simple charts often make the most sense. And you want to keep the detail to a minimum unless it adds critical context to those KPIs. So again, takeaway here is that how you visualize and present your data is largely a function of who will be consuming it, right? So that fellow analyst might want the granular details, managers and executives might prefer top line KPIs, and again, that focus on clear data-driven insights. So we've covered some key questions to ask when designing individual charts and visuals. Next, I'll introduce our six-step framework for assembling those visual elements into clear and cohesive dashboards. We like to break things out into six steps. We're not gonna cover all of these in depth like we do in our Thinking Like an Analyst course, but I wanna introduce it at a high level here because we'll be keeping this framework in mind as we work on our AdventureWorks dashboard throughout this section of the course. So the framework includes defining the purpose, right? Who is it designed for? What are you trying to communicate? Then it's all about choosing the right metrics, presenting that data effectively, eliminating clutter and noise, using layout to focus attention, and finally wrapping it all into a clear story. So to summarize here, a well-designed dashboard should serve a distinct purpose for a distinct audience. It should use clear and effective metrics and visuals, and it should provide a simple, intuitive user experience. And as you're building dashboards, the types of questions you want to consider, just like the three questions we just covered, who are the end users of the dashboard? What are their key business goals and their objectives and incentives? What are the most important questions that they need answers to? and how can I present this information as clearly as I possibly can. And I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes here. It's typically used in the context of user experience design, but I think it applies really well to data visualization as well, which is perfection is achieved not when there's nothing more to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. Great reminder that clarity and simplicity is always better than complexity when it comes to data viz. All right, now that we have solid frameworks for choosing the right visuals and designing an effective dashboard, the last thing I'd recommend that you do before you start building is to brainstorm or sketch out potential layouts. Here's an example of what that process might look like. All right, so let's take a stab at actually sketching out a layout for our AdventureWorks dashboard. And if we think back to our dashboard design framework, remember step one was to define the purpose, the objective. And to do that, let's think all the way back to our project brief at the beginning of the course. And what I've done here is reiterate or rehash the goals that we need to achieve. Track KPIs, compare regional performance, analyze product level trends, and identify high value customers. Now that's way too much information to put on a single page or in a single view. So I think what we need to do here is create a multi-page dashboard. And when I start to think about these goals, a couple words pop out, right? KPIs regional performance, product level trends, and customers. So when I think KPIs, I think about an exec dash, right? Those high level numbers, the things executives care about like profit, revenue, high level trending, and so on. When I think regional, I think geospatial analysis. So something like a map view. Product level, I think we need a product detail view. 
And same with customers. We need a customer detail view as well. And that way we'll create pages that kind of each serve a very distinct deliberate purpose and collectively help us achieve all of these goals for the dashboard. Now, thinking back to our three key questions with the AdventureWorks data in mind, remember question one, what type of data are we dealing with? Well, remember we've got calendar tables, so we certainly have time series, and we'll definitely do a lot of line charts and time trending in our dashboard. We've got categorical fields as well, like product category and subcategory, different ways that we can segment or slice and dice our data. We've got geospatial, right? We've got that territory lookup with fields like continent and country and region. And we also built some hierarchies as well. Question two, what are we trying to communicate? Well, that may vary depending on the individual visual, but generally speaking, we'll definitely be showing some comparisons between categories and certainly over time. And we'll also show composition. We've got some great demographic fields in our customer data set that we can use to make some interesting compositional analyses there. Now we likely won't be doing much in terms of distribution or relationships with this data set. So I think primarily we're gonna be focusing on comparisons and composition. So we should expect to see a lot of line charts, a lot of bar and column charts, maybe some donuts, some gauge charts, things like that. And last question, who's the end user, right? Who's the audience? It was right there in the brief. This is for managers. So what's nice about managers is it kind of puts us right squarely in the middle between the lower level analysts who are looking for all sorts of deep detail and the super high level executives who just want the KPIs, the key numbers, right? So with an audience of the management team, I think we certainly should still skew towards keeping things pretty basic and simple, you know, standard chart types. But I think we can afford to get a little bit detailed, especially to accomplish some of these goals, like product level trends or individual high value customers. So next up, I want to start visualizing what this might actually look like. I'm going to start with kind of the exec view or the exec dashboard here. And this is typically an iterative process. You may very well have no idea what the dashboard is going to look like. In this case, I've got a pretty clear idea of what I want this to look like, but just know that it won't always be this smooth or this polished right out of the gate. So when I'm starting to think about how to assemble components of a dashboard, I'm often thinking in terms of something called a reading pattern, which is basically how the viewer's eye moves along the screen. And here in the United States, two very common reading patterns are called the F pattern and the Z pattern. So with an F pattern, the viewer starts looking in the top left corner first, their eyes kind of scan from left to right, then they go back and down, scan left to right again, back and down, kind of forming that F shape. The Z pattern, as you might guess, again, you're starting in the top left, moving left to right, kind of moving down diagonally to the lower left corner, and then to the right, to the lower right corner. So either way, the key is that this top strip, this top real estate, is the most important real estate in our dashboard because that's the first place viewers are gonna look. So what I typically like to do is put the company brand or logo right there to kind of set the immediate context and then put my big KPI cards right there in the top right. So these are gonna be like our high level overall numbers. Things like total profit, total orders, total revenue, things that executives and the manager team will really care about seeing first and foremost. Moving down to the left, this is kind of our next most important piece of real estate. I'm trying to think about what managers typically care about. It's the money, right? It's revenue, it's trending, it's profits. So let's put a nice line chart trending view here. Maybe we can use a date hierarchy so that users can drill up or drill down at different levels of granularity. And every time we're showing metrics like this, it's really important to include context. Right, so I think what we might be able to do is include some nice KPI cards down here that can show something like current month revenue. And again, that's gonna give us context like current month, previous month, month over month change, and so on and so forth. Now, one thing I do typically when I'm designing dashboards is I'll kind of get more and more granular as I move through the reading pattern. So that's what we're doing here. We've got very, very high level metrics here. We've got 
still pretty high level overall revenue trending here. Now I think what we can do is start breaking down that revenue a bit by doing things like a product category breakout. This is a good way to show comparisons across categories. So this could be categories. And then I don't want to get too deep here, but I think a little bit of a product level view here would be helpful. Maybe just like the top 10 revenue driving products or something like that. To do that, we can use a table or a matrix. Let's call it top products. And maybe we use some conditional formatting just to bring that data to life a bit. So that looks pretty good. I think it's painting a pretty good high level picture of how the business is doing. Simple charts, simple visuals, not overwhelming. I think that's a great starting point. But now what we need to think about is the user experience, right? Because this is just one view out of the four that we plan to build within this dashboard. So I wanna create a very intuitive user-friendly way for our audience to jump from page to page. So one thing I like to do here it's something like a left nav, almost like a website style, where we can put some icons right here on the left that will use page navigation and bookmarks to jump users straight from page to page. So now real quick, let's take a look at what those additional pages might look like. Again, nothing set in stone. This is kind of quick and dirty at this point. But remember, we've got a map visual for geospatial, we've got product detail, and we've got customer detail as well. So for map, here's a sketch of the world's worst map. You get the picture. Maybe we've got a slicer up here to drill into a specific country or continent. I think that's all we need for that view. Product detail. I'd like to focus in on an individual product for this page. And remember in the DAX section, we built out those really nice targets, right? The revenue target, the order targets, the profit targets. So I think we could use something like gauge charts here to show product performance uh, against those targets. That would be a really helpful insight to show on that view. And then I think we need some trending views here as well, like revenue or profit trending. Maybe do a column chart trending to show returns or return rate as well. Something like that I think would give some good product specific detail. And last but not least for customers, maybe we start with kind of some high level metrics, total customers, maybe revenue or orders per customer. This is a good place to do some of that kind of compositional or composition analysis because we've got those categorical fields with customer demographics like income level, gender, age, education level, and so on. So a donut chart might be a great way to visualize that. I think we should show some sort of trending view here as well, like total customers. And because we want to identify individual high value customers, we really need some table or matrix level details here, like top end customers, whether that's 10, 50, 100. And last but not least, we've been taking a very exploratory approach to dashboard design to this point, which means we're not trying to craft a specific narrative to explain exactly what's happening and why. We're creating a dashboard or a tool that our end users or managers can use to explore and understand the data on their own. But to add a bit of an explanatory vibe, one thing we could do here is drop in, you know, an insight or an info button, find an interesting pattern or trend, and then use a bookmark to kind of really draw attention to that pattern and drive users to a pre-filtered view to really help tell that story. So there you have it. This is a great starting point. Hopefully this will serve as a nice framework as we build out the dashboard throughout this section. Now, if you're excited to learn more and build job-ready skills, check out our best-selling Power BI desktop course, or dive into our specialist path, which covers desktop, service, advanced DAX, PL300 certification, and more. You can also explore our entire suite of self-paced courses, guided projects, and portfolio tools, and create your own personalized learning plan for free. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. I'll see you in the next one.